Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to my patch overview for patch 3.45. This is a minor patch being added between patch 3.4 and 3.5, in case you couldn't map that out in some other way. We're going to be going over some of the additions to Palace of the Dead, the new animal weapon quest, or at least the quest names, because they never detail the quest itself in the patch notes itself, as well as a few other little changes that they're doing here in the patch notes. It's pretty late for me, and I got an early stream tomorrow to stream this content, so let's get right into it. So new animal weapon quests, uh, the new animal weapons are going to be increasing from item level 240 to item level 260. If you had cut, well, any customized stats you had on the I-240 will remain customized on the I-260, but it will increase its other stats to, uh, to make it an item level 260 equivalent weapon. Uh, now there are three quests for it, but I can promise you it's only one upgrade. As for what these quests actually entail, we don't know yet because the servers aren't up and I'm sure somebody's out there trying to data mine it right now. But, I noticed that it says, please consult and exchange information with other players as you progress to learn how these weapons are enhanced. Now, they've done that a lot more recently, but I remember the first time they told people that was during the light step. I expect this step to be somewhat equivalent to the hyperconductive step, where it was increased from I-210 to I-230. I very much expect this one to go from I-240 to I-260 in a very similar fashion. The question is, we just don't know exactly what it is we need to do. All we know is there's three quests, future proof, cut, uh, future proof cut from a different cloth, and seeking inspiration. And hopefully we'll know how difficult the step is very quickly tomorrow when people start powering through it. Also, uh, it specifically says certain animal weapon quests will employ a system which will require players to proceed using the same class or job. Now, that can mean any number of things, that doesn't mean that it has to be the duty. For example, you couldn't actually hand in items for your sands for the I-240 step, or you couldn't actually do the enhancements at all unless you were on the job with the right weapon equipped. So, I guess that could really be something like this for, you know, it could be something similar to that for this, uh, but it could also mean you have to do the duties in uh, as the job or with the weapon equipped or something like that. I think it would say if you needed the weapon equipped right here, but it might say it in the quest. I'll be sure to read it tomorrow. Um, new side story quests, What Lies Beneath, Dead But Not Gone, these are quests for Palace of the Dead, which we're going to get to here in a little bit. Dark Knight Action Unleashed will no longer cancel auto attacks in PvE areas, that was a PvP change, they thought it was going to be good for PvE, it's not, so they're reverting it. They, they recently spoke about this actually at Fan Festival. They're increasing the strength of the Echo in Alexander Midas Savage, so if you want to go back and get your mount, or I'm sorry, get your mount, get your minion, there, and get your, go get your Fossilet now that it's 15%. New floors have been added to Palace of the Dead. So, this is going to answer a few questions for people. For one, the new weapons from Palace of the Dead are I item level 255. If you want to find out what the stats are, you can go to ffxiv.ariala.com and you can pull the stats from there. As for some of the rules, everyone's been wondering, is it going to be a continued save? Do I just need to beat floor 50? What's my ether pool going to look like? Well, let's get our answers right now. So what lies beneath is a quest that you can pick up from the Wood Whaler Expeditionary Captain and the South Shroud. And again, the minimum level here is 17. That is a very important thing to remember, and it's going to be important when we get to the next set of quests. So you only need to basically have cleared floor 50 and finish the quest, the house that Death built. You don't even have to do the side quest afterwards. Um, and then you'll be given the option to either start your new saves from floor 1 or floor 51. So no, you don't have to do 1 to 50 again tomorrow before you go into 51. As long as you've completed it once and you accept this quest, you'll be able to start right from floor 51. You'll also automatically be set to level 60 when you enter floor 51. So regardless on if you're queuing in on level 1 or level 5 or level 10, you've beaten floors 1 to 50, you've gotten the 1 to 60 experience at this point, all the floors 51 through 200 will now take place at level 60. On top of that, we have the reward system. Pretty much the same, but better from floors 1 to 50. Uh, Gilmore and Potsher, just like with floor 50, will be rewarded upon reaching floor 100. And then based on the level of when you enter, you'll get rewards. And it's pretty much the same system that it worked in 1 to 50, where you get Poetics, Lore, and Scripture, and Gil, if you're a max level character. Uh, and as you can see, it's a decent amount. It's 30 Scripture, 60 Lore, so a pretty decent amount. We don't know how long these floors will take, but I'm not going to complain about 60 Lore and 30 Scripture from doing Palace of the Dead, no way. And even floor 100 gives you 100 Lore and 50 Scripture, so even better. If you go in as something between level 50 and 60, you'll get experience points, gill, and poetics, which is normal. It's the same way it was in 1 to 50. And if you go in as a pre-level 50, you just get experience points and gill. So yes, you can use floor 60 or floors 51 through 100 to continue leveling your jobs just like you did from 1 to 50 before. Also, uh, in case you didn't know, armory bonus applies to those EXP bonuses. And on top of that, if you're under level 20 when you enter, then uh, the new adventure mentor experience bonus will apply as well, as long as there's a new adventure and a mentor in the party. 
Now it is impossible. Now it is now possible to enhance the strength of your Pajali weapons after clearing floors 100 and increasing the strength of your Etherpool arm and armor to plus 60. Speak with the NPC E Una Kator, which is the same NPC as before, to enhance your weapon. Please note that in doing so, the strength of your Etherpool arm and armor will be reduced by 60. It's actually going to tell you a little bit early, uh, later down in the patch notes, but the maximum Etherpool arm and armor is now plus 99, which makes sense. There's 200 floors now, so it pretty much that's the equivalent of almost being like level 200, kind of. And instead of it absorbing all of your Etherpool arm and armor, it reduces it by 60. So if you're at plus 99, you decide you want an I-255 weapon, it'll bring you down to plus 39, plus 39, as opposed to bringing you down to zero, as it did before. What that does make things interesting about What's interesting about that, if I could only English at this hour, um, is that it doesn't make any mention of what's going to happen to people who didn't have plus 30, plus 30 before tomorrow. I'm beginning to fear, and I have a feeling this fear is very correct, unless, I'm, unless we read through this again and it changes, that if you didn't have plus 30, plus 30 saved up, you're probably going to wish you did by tomorrow, because it doesn't look like they're going to cut you any slack on uh, getting the new upgrades and whatnot. That being said, it's Palace of the Dead. You're probably clear. I remember I cleared my first Palace of the Dead with like plus 11, plus 8 at 450. Like, <laughs> you just got to play it a little bit more careful. Floors 100 and beyond, while floors up to 100 are related to the story, all floors after 100 were created strictly as a challenge. It's one important thing. For that reason, you cannot do it with a matched party. So you cannot do floors 100 and above, or 101 and above, in a matched party. It either needs to be fixed, or you need to be solo. You cannot join a duty finder party. That is interesting that they are so... That's like the same rules they use for like extreme primals and, uh, and Alexander Savage, or at least the rules they used to before the raid finder. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty interested to see how that ends up working out for Palace of the Dead. So this is the interesting part. In order to enter floors 101 and above, you need to start from either floor 1 or floor 51 and get up to floor 100. That's easy. But the bigger thing is your party KO count must be zero. That means you must have never had a full wipe across your entire save file. That is uh, pretty crazy. So in case you're worried about that, don't let your party abandon the duty or log out while inside the instance and make sure you all leave the instance like normal because otherwise you might be seeing yourself screwed when you try to go to floors, four, uh, floors 101 and above. On top of that, they've made a bunch of changes here. As you can see, like maximum strength, strength of ether pool gear when synced at certain levels has been increased. Uh, gear will now be synced on every floor. Maximum strength on Etherpool gear has been increased. Uh, they changed the name of an enemy. New commanders have been added, which we'll get to a little bit earlier. Um, same thing here. Like, if you even want to go get the 235 weapon, instead of reducing it to zero, it'll reduce it by 30. Kind of like we talked about the redu reduction of 60 earlier. There's new types of accursed hordes. Iron trim, silver trimmed, and gold trim sacks can now be obtained. I'm assuming these have better rewards and they're gotten from the higher tier floors, of course. And the dungeon progression window will no longer remain active when using commanders with a game controller. There's also a ranking system now where you get a score based on the number of kills you land, the floor you made it to, your ether pool arm and armor when you got there. And uh, you're put in a leaderboard uh, scenario. You can, as you can see, you can access the ranking of it via a QR code or by clicking the link. And uh, you can find out where you stand. And it's done, done. It does it per job and also whether you're solo or with a fixed party. So there's a if you want to climb to the top of the Palace of the Dead leaderboard for whatever reason, there you go. You have it now. There is a ranking page as well. Season three of the feast will begin soon. Season two rewards are going to be dished out. Season three rewards will have a mount. Looks like it's going to be a hellhound. So interested to see how that pans out. And there's also some uh, PvP changes here. Um, the requisite PvP rating to participate in promotion qualifiers for certain tiers has been adjusted. In accordance with this change, the minimum PvP rating required for certain tiers has also been adjusted. Just some more changes to the rating. The decrease in PvP rating upon losing a match has been reduced for bronze, silver, gold, and platinum tiers. That's like four or five tiers. Why did you do that? Matching algorithms have been adjusted to ensure players are matched with others of the same or an adjacent tier. So it's just so it doesn't reach outside of those tiers very much so. And the class and job requirement has been changed to adjust the job requirement for Feast 4 on 4. Now, I'm still waiting. Where is the degradation where player people who don't consistently feast will lose their ranking over time? I really feel like that's one of the major things that's still missing in the feast that gets people to do it for a week, and then once they're comfortable and they don't need to worry about people overtaking them and the ranking anymore, they're good. They just don't play anymore. And we really need a degradation system to keep the feast active so people feel like, well, I'm going to play this because otherwise I'm going to degrade. I don't know. I feel like it's a good idea. New items, doesn't really matter. Demi Matter had its, uh, what is it, Grand Company sale price? What is this, vendoring prices? I guess those are, I guess these are vendoring prices for, like, 
new items and I, I see some demi materia and some housing items some leaves <laughs> new achievements uh, clear the floors 100 150 200 obtain a piece of kinda gear and now there's also finally solo achievements now I'm curious because I'm someone who has solo floors 1 to 50 am I gonna get that achievement when I log on I freaking better I don't want to have to do that again <laughs> um, but I am also planning on eventually soloing through to floor 100 so uh, I'll be able to get that achievement as well. And then the rest of these are achievements for getting the new, looks to be uh, the new animal weapons. The I-260 animal weapons are all right here. Dead Tired, Dead But Not Gone. Uh, I think Dead But Not Gone was that. I don't remember Dead But Not Gone. Yeah, that was that was uh, for completing Floor 100. Okay, that's what I thought it was. I just had to double check before I said something very, very stupid. What else do we have here? Volume of this new sound effect on the countdown command. What else is there? Log filters have been added for current orchestrian track messages. Uh, search for the, you can search for items from like hand in menus now. The two new commanders are the commander of raising and the commander of resolution. I'm assuming the resolution is a transforming one. I'm assuming the raising is one that allows you to raise. I don't really know what else it could do. Maybe it's re-raise. Maybe it gives you the ability to resurrect once like upon death. Uh, we'll have to wait and see until the servers actually go live. And then a bunch of bug fixes. I'm not going to go through all this stuff. It's always a ton of stuff. Here we go. Uh, they have replicas for the new animal weapons. They have the Kinna weapons. Remember I-255 for the, Palace of the, new, the new Palace of the Dead weapons and I-260 for the animal weapon. Uh, and then we have a bunch of stuff. These are all like feast rewards and some of these are new items that were added. Some of them are the Accursed Horde. Wind Up Edda is one of the new minions. Palace of the Dead, almost definitely. Black Bosom Orchestrian Roll, that's the Floor 50 theme. Blasphemous Experiment, I'm assuming that's Floor 100. Fog of Phantom, Notice of Death. I'm assuming these are just all new Palace of the Dead one, especially Notice of Death. Uh, some of these probably come from the later floors. Abigail Barding and the Night Pegasus Whistle. I'm going to assume that the Night Pegasus Whistle comes from Palace of the Dead as well. Just because it's a night Pegasus, and that's, you know, edgy and cool. And then the Far Eastern gear, I guess this is this is Korean. This is gear that was from the Korean servers, wasn't it? Or is it the Chinese servers or something? Um, I think that those are those are items from one of the other international servers, and they're being added, be put on sale in the uh, Mog Station starting, well, when the patch goes live. And that's patch 3.45. I plan to be streaming this. We're going to be on the Twitch front page, streaming Palace of the Dead tomorrow morning. The stream starts bright and early at 7 a.m. PDT. We'll be going on until about 2 p.m. PDT, take a break, and then we have State of the Realm as we do every week, where we'll be talking about Palace of the Dead and the new Animal Weapon Quest. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think about Patch 3.45. Are you excited to dive into Palace of the Dead? Are you looking forward to soloing 100 floors, 200 floors? I'll try to solo 200 floors. It's probably not going to go very well. But we'll see what happens. Anyway, let me know what you think. Let me know what you're looking forward to. I will see you all tomorrow morning bright and early. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And until next time, take care.